Hi, this is a review of NeoFinder 6. NeoFinder has had a long history. It started its life as an app called CD Finder, which a lot of you may remember. Despite all the competition, the CD Finder survived all the years because it had its niche of users. But as the time doesn't stand still, so didn't CD Finder. Because of all the change that has happened in the way how we archive our data, the name wasn't appropriate anymore. Nowadays, hard disks are so cheap that most are better off to buy a new hard drive than to spend the same amount of money in DVDs that allows burning only the half amount of data. So, NeoFinder was born. I've checked and I personally bought CD Finder way back in 2007 when I started my professional career as audio engineer. At that time, it became important for me to archive old projects for a longer period of time. Because it's too much hassle to put in every DVD and every following DVD into a DVD drive just to see what contents are on. I needed a solution. CD Finder was perfect. You put in a CD, DVD, whatever, it reads the contents plus metadata and saves them. Now, whenever I wanted to search the data, I opened CD Finder, searched, found the file or files, and then I could even use CD Finder to copy only those files to my desktop without traversing the DVD with Finder. The time went by and hard disk became cheaper. CDs were dying out and the name CD Finder became inappropriate as companies shifted their archives from CDs to hard disks. That's why NeoFinder has Neo in its name. Everything's new here. The interface is new, the program is rewritten in Coco, it has over 170 new features, smart folders, geotech support, etc. NeoFinder is a really great update for the software and in the following screencast we are going to take a look at the basics of working with NeoFinder, all the way up to more advanced functions like geotagging for photos. In this first part we assume we don't have any data yet. We only have the sample catalog that you're going to see when you download NeoFinder by yourself. So let's see what data NeoFinder can import. We go to File, New Catalog from Disk or Folder. A disk is a much better description for anything you put in your computer. In the Select This option, NeoFinder jumps to the Volumes folder already. Here you can select the volume you want to import and click Start. The CD I have attached here well, it's a fake CD. In reality, it's just a USB key, but I'm still going to use this USB key in our example here. After you select the disk you want to import, you're going to see the cataloging settings always after selecting a disk or a folder to catalog. Unless you uncheck, always confirm these settings, but I highly recommend to keep this checked, just in case. In the catalog settings, you can define what is imported. At top, it says metadata. You can import photos, videos, music and text files, and also create previews in your preferred size. You can also import archive files like disk images, zip files, stuff it files, rare archives or tape archives. And in the ignore tab, you can ignore common files like invisible files, aliases, or package contents. The include levels section allows you to include what else should be important, like finder comments, or in case you already set up open meta keywords or tags, you'll be happy to know that NeoFinder respects your efforts here. Just make sure to check read open meta keywords in this dialog. You can also generate file checks, which is useful to check whether a file has been altered since it's been imported into the catalog. Now that, now that we are all set, you can just click OK and NeoFinder begins cataloging. Depending on disk size, this can take a bit longer. When you need a text representation of your library, you can export selected catalogs into a text file using a specific text format and a specific date format. You can also check and uncheck which fields to include in the text file. Then just click export, name your text file, choose where you want to save this file to, then click export. In my case, now I have a new text file on my desktop, which is named photostick.txt which contains my photo sticks, catalogs, contents. In case you've used another asset management application, you can import these catalogs into NeoFinder as well. You don't lose any data. Just click File and then Import Catalogs. NeoFinder is able to import a slew of formats. 
Just click the format pop-up and you can choose from a variety of import formats. Among these formats are not just Mac tools, but also Windows tools in case you want to transfer your media library to your Mac from your Windows PC. If you switch from CD Finder, you're also going to be happy to hear that NeoFinder can read that database interchangeably, which basically means you can use both apps at the same time. You can simply choose the database NeoFinder uses in NeoFinder Preferences. Here you can simply change to your CD Finder database, then select Choose, and your CD Finder database appears in the Neo Finder window. In case some items of your library are missing, just click Special and Reload Database. In case you've used CFD Finder in between, you can also use the handy shortcut F5 to reload the database. Now that we have everything up and running, let's see what NeoFinder is really good at, finally. Because just as the best backup doesn't help you anything if you can't restore your files, the best asset manager doesn't help you anything if you can't find any of your files. Find comes in three stages, I'd say. First, there's quick find, which is right at the top. Enter a keyword and hit return to perform a search. The search is performed without any regard to select the catalogs or any metadata. Basically, everything that includes your search term will be found. After the search has completed, however, you can activate a more thorough search by clicking this disclosure triangle. To Spotlight users, this dialog may look familiar. In fact, you can even use Spotlight's metadata to search for your files instead of NeoFinder. But keep in mind that NeoFinder catalogs more metadata. In this dialog, you can also set to include all of the following statements or that any of the following statements should be true. Most of the times, however, you want that all of the following statements should be true. In the dialog below, you can set to include every catalog file, some catalog files, or those items with a specific label. You can set up these labels by going to New Finder, Preferences, and then click Labels. Think of these labels as categories for your most backup items. For movie makers, for instance, these are movies and TV shows, music and sounds for audio engineers, books, documents and other text for writers. You probably get the idea. So let me just close this dialog. Now in my case, I don't want to search every catalog file. I want to search just a specific catalog file. So I click Select Catalogs, then Edit. And from this menu, you can either select one specific catalog file, select all and then hold down the command key to deselect specific items or select one item with your mouse, hold down the shift key and click again to select a range of catalogs. In my case, however, I just want to search our previously imported PhotoStick catalog. Then I click save and in the next, and in the next step, I want to search for something that is not so easy to handle for Spotlight, which is IPTC or rather EXIF data. In the EXIF data, we can search that whether a photo has or has no GPS tags. In my case, I first want to search for every picture that has GPS geotags set up already. So I click just find and it's taking a while to find the items that have a GPS tag already. Again, remember, this is all done from NeoFinder. You don't need Finder or the attached media to find these items. This is why you want to get an asset management application like NeoFinder for your archive data. There is no need to keep all your archive media disks attached to your PC all of the time. The third stage of searches come as smart folders. Albums as well as smart folders, allow you to set different views onto your database of files. Albums are fixed views, whereas smart folders update automatically according to your smart folder settings. These are basically the same thing as the previously mentioned advanced search. This is why I call the smart folders the third stage of searches, 
because these are basically saved smart searches. To create a new smart or normal folder, just click the plus in the lower left corner. This menu allows you to create folders in your library, as well as catalog new disks or folders, and create new albums and smart folders. For now though, let's cancel this action because I wanted to show you something pretty cool NeoFinder is able to do, which might not belong to the feature set it's advertising for. There's a smart folder named items with GPS tags created by default, basically the same thing that we created with our smart folder. Now for this example, however, let me change this smart folder slightly to include just our photo stick to keep this example as small as possible. This smart folder obviously scans all pictures for a geotag and displays them in a convenient list. When you click on a photo, you can open the small inspector to the right and get an overview of this photo's metadata. Its name, you can set the label, you can comment on this item. You can also see things like the size, EXIF data, IPTC info, but you can also open a map view to see where this picture has been taken. This is also the thing that I wanted to show you. With NeoFinder, you cannot only view geotags, you can also alter or add them to photos. Just right click, select geotag, and then set GPS location from GeoFinder or Google Earth. To add a GPS tag to photos, this can also be done very easily. Just let me alter our small folder again to include those that have no GPS tag currently. And let's say I want to add a GPS tag to this picture. I just search for Airport Stuttgart, for instance. Then right click my photo, set GPS from GeoFinder, select the location. Remember that you can also zoom in on this. Let's say we just pick the middle of Stuttgart here and then click right geotag. Now the icon on the lower right corner shows that this photo now has a proper GPS geotag. Using the method that I just described to write geotags to photos that don't currently have them, you can easily add GPS geotags also to your iPhoto library because iPhoto currently is not able to let you manipulate GPS geotags. This way you can use NeoFinder to write GPS geotags to photos you have in your iPhoto library to add them to your places directory. In the meanwhile, I've switched our GPS geotag smart folder again back to include those which have a geotag. I've selected a photo here to show you the Wikipedia inspector, which you can find in this menu down here. Once you click at new finder queries Wikipedia for this particular geotag, and finds Wikipedia entries belonging to that location. This way you can research the places you've been to. Normal albums, shown in green, allow you to manually select which disks and folders from your library you should be listed. Otherwise, these albums are not different from smart folders. They are just static in terms of auto-updating but they generally give you the same abilities as smart folders. There's again an info and a map view on the right. Again, there's no difference here from smart and static folders other than they are static. As I was saying in the introduction, I'm really glad to have NeoFinder. Now that all features are also geared towards disk usage rather than CD usage, it's become more valuable than ever before. You can also think of it as a more powerful Spotlight, since it keeps more metadata than Spotlight. Its ability to add geotags to existing photos which currently have none, that plus year-long support makes this a really great purchase for the new year. Thanks for watching.